Like many other content management systems, Magento has the ability for you to install extensions and themes. The process is slightly involved, so let's walk through it here. The first step is to go to marketplace.magento.com. There are third-party websites that offer extensions and themes to download, but installing those on your website is a bit more advanced and is really meant for intermediate to advanced users of Magento. So we're gonna keep things simple and install them the preferred way, which is to find them on this website and install them using Magento's standard procedure. Once you've come to this website, make sure you log in. If you don't have an account, go ahead and sign up for an account and log in because you do have to have an account to get these extensions and themes. Go ahead and do that right now if you need to. The process for installing an extension or a theme on your Magento site is basically the same. We're going to use an extension for our example because currently there are no free working themes, unfortunately. For Magento, there are some paid themes and there are some that are marked as free that aren't actually compatible with our version of Magento. So we're gonna use an extension. Notice when we hover over extensions, we get a screen that has lots of different categories. Let's say we want an extension for content and customizations. So we'll click on that. Now, once you're taken to this page, and this is true for themes as well, you're gonna to want to filter down to your version of Magento so that you're not seeing extensions or themes that are incompatible with your version. So we're gonna choose platform Magento 2, that's already there, edition, community. And for this tutorial, I'm on version 2.1, Assuming you are as well, that's what you'll select. And then it will show us only those extensions that are compatible with our version of Magento. Let's say we want to use this EU cookie compliance extension. As you may know, in the EU, you have to tell visitors to your website that you do use cookies on your site. It's a privacy concern over there. So we're just going to imagine that we're running a website or a store rather in the EU and that we need this extension to help us display that message. So we'll click on that. And if you don't see this, if you're getting a different set of results and this is maybe farther down, you can always search for it. It's called EU cookie compliance. But whenever you find that, go ahead and click on it. And then you're taken to the page. It has some additional information. Uh, some of them are not free, as you probably noticed. In fact, most extensions and themes are not free, but this one happens to be free. Some of them also, even if they are free, they offer service plans that you can pay for, and some of them also offer help installing the extension, which you can pay for. This one doesn't have any of that, so we don't have to check any of those options. This is just outright free with no options to pay for anything else. We'll click Add to Cart. And once that's in your cart, we're gonna to go to Checkout and Place Order. So once you place your order, you will get an email saying, thank you for adding this extension or theme to your account. And usually it'll give you instructions on what to do from there, how to tie this to your website. But I'm gonna show you how here anyways. Once you've placed your order, you need to click on your name up here in the top right corner. We're still at marketplace.magento.com and go to my account. Once you click on that, under my products, click my access keys. Now, currently you won't see anything because by default it takes you directly to the Magento 1 tab, and that's not what we're using. But click on the Magento 2 tab, and you'll see a set of public and private access keys. I'm not going to click on it myself because the private access key is considered sensitive information. But just click on Magento 2, and it'll be obvious. You'll see that. And once you see that, go ahead and keep this tab open, and in a new tab, go to the back end of your Magento website. So you're gonna go back to the admin section of your website and click System. And underneath Tools, click Web Setup Wizard. Now a quick note here. It's common to see a 500 error on this page or to see what's essentially a blank page with sort of a blank light gray menu bar with no text up at the top. If you encounter that problem, that's a bug in the current version of Magento. If you come across this, often, a fix to that problem is to disable op caching, that's OP caching, on your server. If you don't know how to do this, or you don't have access to do this, get in touch with your server admin or your web hosting company to see if they can do this for you. 
At the risk of repeating myself, this is another reason I highly recommend using a web host that specializes in Magento hosting, like Nexus, if you plan on running a Magento site. If you're with a web host with deep knowledge of Magento, then when you encounter problems like this, they are much more likely to know what they can do to help than if you are with a host that doesn't have a Magento-specific offering. So once you've found your way to this page, click on System Config, and you'll see a page that looks vaguely like this. Your access key fields will not be filled in, however, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You're simply going to grab the public and private access keys from underneath your Magento 2 tab and paste them into their respective fields and then save. Once you've done that, go ahead and click on Component Manager. And here where it says New Purchases, you will likely see a different number Beneath this, you may see 27 or something like that. It doesn't really matter. Just don't worry if you don't see 29. Click the Install link. This is where we have access to all of the extensions and themes that we've tied to our account, and we can install them from here. For me, third on the list right here is Cookie Compliance. This is the extension that we just downloaded. If you don't see it right off the bat, then just look around for it. They should be sorted by name, so It'll start with Hello Brave. Just look for things in alphabetical order until you see Hello Brave slash Cookie Compliance. We're going to check that as well as this Hello Brave slash core extension, which the documentation doesn't make entirely clear, but this is required for the Cookie Compliance extension. So we're going to check both of those and click Install. We're going to click Start Readiness Check. Then next, and you may get an error such as this, in this case, it says cron script readiness checked failed, found non-writable paths. Usually the information here is pretty helpful telling you what you need to change in order to finish installing these extensions. If we find the HTML directory, all of this is stuff farther back on our server that's not really relevant, we're going to find HTML and from there we need to find app slash design slash admin html slash magento and then the same thing except we're going to find design slash front end slash magento as well we need to make these paths writable so we're going to go to our file system and we're starting off in html it looks like we need i need to page over one we're looking for the app directory and then design and here we have those two directories, frontend and admin HTML. We'll do these one at a time. We're going to go here. And in this case, our frontend directory is empty. So let's just go ahead and create a new folder. It's looking for capitalized Magento. So we'll, we will create that keeping the capital M as it is. Otherwise, it may not work. And click Create. And then just to be safe, Let's temporarily give this group write permissions in case that's what it needs. And we can come back and remove that after we're done. And then let's back up and find admin HTML as well. And same thing, we're going to create a new folder here, capital case Magento. And again, just to be safe, we'll make this writable by the group. And there is one more thing in the file system that sometimes need to do when enabling extensions and themes that the readiness check doesn't always look for. Let's back up a little bit to the app folder. So we are in our root directory slash app and the Etsy folder. We have this file here, env.php. Let's make the group permission on this one writable as well. Sometimes that is necessary for this process. And again, when we're finished, we'll want to go back and remove the right permissions from these three things. So once that's done, let's try our readiness check again. And it looks like we're all set. And don't get scared if this process takes a while, particularly the component dependency check sometimes takes a few minutes. So if it does seem to be going on for a long time, don't freak out. That's fairly common.